personal assistant is handling all these things for me. There you go. That sounds like a better idea. <laughs> yeah. Leverage. <laughs> leverage. Let's go for leverage. Always a really important topic, uh, morning routine. I know that it really makes a difference in my life for sure. Okay, still working on it. Here we go. Um, okay. Okay, we'll see if this is gonna work. Do away. All right, well, hold on, we're getting there. <laughs> okay, we are live on Facebook. Hello guys, thank you for joining me, those that are hanging out with me today here in Zoom land. Um, and this is recording or streaming inside of your journey with Jenny. I'm at the lake and my uh, bedroom hold up here um, because I've got family out there having fun. It's fall break here in Tulsa. How are you guys doing? Good. Good, good. Yeah. Well, yeah. awesome. So um, today is all about morning routine. And clearly this is a hot topic and something that everyone always needs help with. You never have it all figured out, and there's always ways to improve our morning routine uh, for amazing productivity. And so I've got a couple friends here hanging out with me in, in real life person on Zoom. So I'm gonna ask you guys, you're the, you're the lucky ones who get to share with me. I mean, what inspired you to wanna be a part of this um, with this topic? What is important to you about uh, you know, maximizing your morning? I think for me, it's because I don't feel like I have a good routine in the morning um, or I don't, I just don't maybe take the time to to do what needs to be done in the morning to really set the day off on the right foot. And so I was more open for some good ideas, suggestions. I, I honestly, this is probably the one thing I hate to admit. I mean, I, I have it on my calendar, but I don't. It's like, it's a definite time blocking yeah. miscue of myself. It's there, but I don't follow it. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a snoozer, and so I will hit the snooze bar instead of getting up when my calendar says I should be getting up and doing my morning routine. Well, and I know you pretty well, and I know you're pretty focused and determined, and so how does that feel for you when you are doing that and you know better? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, and as part of it too is, you know, in your question, I think in, in your promotion for this one, um, you know, you had talked about you'd be more night owl versus morning person. I'm definitely more of a night. Yeah all type person so I'm not a go to bed early because I know I need to get up early the next day if I need to get up early the next day for something I really have to do I'll still do it and then I'll just get less sleep yeah and I don't you know I don't yeah. follow that so yeah it is because it, it does annoy me because I look at my calendar and I tend to follow it pretty strictly yeah except gonna for say. that I was gonna say I don't, piece. I don't think you're alone in that yeah. at all yeah, yeah. Tina, did you have anything that was really, you know, just what you want to take away from our little bit of time here today? Um, I really just think, you know, just hearing, hearing what, how, how you're doing your day and your tips, of course, you know, I've been, um, I have been evolving my day for, you know, it's just, I'm realizing that, that my, my day planning and getting everything in sync will always be a thing. I always kind of thought, oh, I'd finally get it figured out and then I'd be done, but Days are different in real estate and in life. And then of course, um, my husband and I are in real estate together. So we have a business together, a child together and a family. And, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's hard to kind of separate the two and, um, and just his schedule is different than mine. He doesn't want his lined up like mine, if, yet I want to keep him on mine, but I can't do that. I gotta yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You're so right. It's like all of these, um, things come up in life, especially in our industry, real estate. We know that there is no real estate emergency. And if the house is on fire, call the police, don't call me. And still, we don't always live that way ourselves. We always live urgent on fire in our lives too. So I'll just kind of, you know, share with you guys, um, 
you know, where my morning routine really got a little bit more purposeful was years ago when I first um, really decided to get purposeful with my business. Um, I noticed that I um, hadn't changed some of the habits and those habits were still the um, sleep until 6.30 or so. I don't even know what time it was back then. And what I was realizing is that um, it really came to head when my daughter, I started having more and more success with real estate, which equaled more stress. And I didn't have a team or leverage yet. And so how I relieved a lot of that stress was, you know, working late and getting up early stressed. So never proactive. It was always reactive. I'm sure I was drinking a little bit of wine at night, staying up too late while trying to crunch out all those emails that I wasn't able to get to. And I remember my daughter, um, the old routine and the old day she was maybe four years old. And um, she, you know, I'd get her from her bed upstairs, I'd move her into my bed. And then I would start getting me ready for the day while she's watching TV and having cereal or whatever, you know, the kid's life. And I, you know, looked at her and, and got to this point with her where I was like, get up, get going, get moving. And I, and I, she wouldn't do it. She's four or five. I mean, she was little. And I turned into what I affectionately now today call mean mommy. I yelled at her so loud. I screamed, my throat hurt. And when you yell at your kiddo, what happens? Like that didn't speed up the process that made her cry. And now I've got to hug her and hold her and cuddle her and make her feel good again, because I've just totally, you know, chewed her out for not getting up and get going. And so that was really my breaking point when it comes to morning routine, because I realized right then, I don't always have control over outside factors. And in this case, it was my daughter. And I do have control over me. And so what I could control was waking up earlier and already having a plan for my day so that I get me all ready. I have my quiet time and my coffee and my thinking time before anyone else even wakes up. And just by pushing that up a little bit, then I realized, oh gosh, I need more time in the morning because I like relaxing with the coffee and looking over my calendar and thinking and praying and meditating, like all the things that, that we do early in the morning. And then, oh wait, I need a little bit more time. So now I get up at, my alarm goes off at 4.40, 4.45 actually. Um, and that was really just to allow me a little bit of, of uh, thinking snoozing time where before my calendar starts kicking in. And so I know some of you have taken classes with me and you've seen my time block calendar on my phone and it comes from, um, you know, just um, being so focused on being purposeful that I don't want to waste a minute because I don't want to go back to being unprepared or not in control of my morning. And so, yes, I'm a control freak. And I think that many of us are. Um, but, you know, I just made some notes here and I, I think the things that stood out for me, like I woke up thinking, you know, what's a little catchphrase or quote that I can come up with for today. And after, you know, scrolling and searching for things other people have said, I just was like, really, it's just, and I made this little graphic today that I came up with, wake up with purpose in your heart and a plan for your day. And that just really sums it up for me. When you, you know, before tomorrow morning, we have to already know what matters most to us in life, first off, and then in our business. Like, why are we doing this very challenging, hard business when we, if we don't know what we're, why we're doing it, we're not going to get up on fire and ready to rock the day because we don't, we don't care. And I lived that life for way too long. I lived it for way too long. And then another thing that I'm always thinking about is, you know, I even have this little hack where I did would set my alarm a little bit earlier and I would allow for one snooze. And in that one snooze was my thinking through and visualizing what my day would look like. What's on the calendar for today? What am I going to focus on today? What's the one big rock in today that at the end of the day, I'm going to feel great about my day because I got that one thing done. That could just be a phone call with a certain person. That could be working on one project or wrapping up something with one client. Whatever it is, what's, your, what's going to be your one win for the day? And then another thing that is really just the facts. You got to start the night before. 
So Joshua, I know you like to stay up late probably because you feel like you got to squeeze more things into the day because there's more in your mind and you want to make sure you don't forget anything. And I am lights out, eyeballs closed by 10 p.m. every night. And if I'm not, I am off. I do not like it. I get very cranky if that gets out of whack. And that's how you're able to wake up at 5 a.m. is because when your lights out, eyes closed, and this for not everyone can can live that but maybe you could set a, an alarm on your phone of now I'm going to start the wind down time now I'm going to start relaxing and putting away the computer don't touch the phone anymore because we know they're just like stimulating us right like we can't stop working whenever things are in our mind and our brain and so I mean even for me the kind of hacks that I came up with early on was just having a notepad by my bed instead of my phone because if you send yourself an email or a note you're going to get squirreled and you're going to go check on facebook you're going to do all the things <laughs> and so just having a notepad of don't forget don't forget don't forget and just having that as your go-to so that you get to brain dump it and it's out of there and maybe you guys have heard me with my um with my stories that uh, when I learned, I learned this from an old, a bull coach, I think the second ever I had, his name's Jason Edwards, he's awesome. And he told this story about how, you know, he has his bedside table and he has his brain. And in order to go to bed at night, he would just simply, whatever thought would come into his head, he would just tap himself on his head and he'd like acknowledge that negative thought or that activity and they would just touch his bedside table. And basically that was his way of saying, okay, I hear you and I see you and now I'm going to put you over here on the bedside table. Like you can't come back in now. I'm, I'm blessing and releasing that thought out of my head. And so, you know, we always would tease Mia when she was little, she's 13 now, but she would come down, she'd say, I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I keep thinking of things. And I would say, do I need to take your brain? I'm just going to take my brain, take your brain out of your head. We're going to put it over here and I'm going to keep it. So you can't think about anything anymore. You just have to go to sleep. Um, so I think that, you know, she, we still tease about that um, as a way to get her to get the thoughts out of her head. So starting the night before is huge to even prep and set yourself up for success. You guys know this. I'm not going to tell you anything here today that is life shattering. It just has to be a commitment. And maybe it takes the, that, the establishing that new habit. So that new habit of going to bed earlier or getting up earlier. I mean, I found that the earlier I get up, the more productive I am and the more purposeful I am. I'm not reacting I have already planned it all out. I know Jill um, in the group asked a question. I won't get it just right because it was pretty detailed, but basically about how do you categorize all those different things and thoughts and ad and projects? You know, the answer is going to go back to using the very simple tools that we already have. And, and I know that we all hear about them and we use them and, and that's, you know, the 411. If you have your weekly, and monthly and, and annual goals always in front of you, mine are on a one-sheeter, as many of you know, um, then you know that whatever that thought or project is, if it's a bigger thought or bigger project, put it off to the side into like a projects list or a projects notebook so that you know you've got it somewhere, you know that, or you put it on the calendar for next week, I'm going to think about ABC project or event or a marketing plan. But today, it doesn't get to come into my world because my calendar is already blocked of what needs to happen today. So I'm not going to allow any interference to distract me. And um, this is also something my coach, I don't know if you guys can see this, my, my coach gave me these four areas of productivity or things that, things that a successful person should always be thinking about. And I really just kind of, I use like as a quad, um, a four square on the back of my 411. So a, a successful person always needs to have the, a, a good handle on all these different areas. Your profit for your business, your production. So that's going to be where you are in alignment with your, your business and what goals you had set and the, all that. Um, any projects. So for us, we're real estate agents. We get to help people buy and sell houses, but we also are the leaders of our own businesses and teams where we come up with marketing plans or client events. Well, 
even if you have a team and you have others that help you, you may still be the, the idea person. You may still come up with the idea. And so you have to have a, a handle on any projects you're working on. And then people, whether you have a team or not, you have people all around you. Are you talking to new people that may come into your world? These people, if you're a lead real estate agent, you're the agent for your team, people could even be people in your business. They could be your buyers and sellers. So what people do I need to keep thinking about? Who are my most important people today or this week or this month? Um, so those are some of the ways that I get real focused on what matters most. And that, you do that every week, Jenny? You do that one, that project one every week? Yeah. Yeah. So I just really transfer from one, um, from one 411 each week. Remember, Lisa, how I printed yeah. off each week? Mm -hmm. So then I just say, okay, so this was actually last week, and so I'm still carrying it around with me because I need to make sure that everything made it from this one to this week. Um, because, you know, sometimes life is crazy, and that's just what happens. And so I carry around two because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. They're doing a class for that with the 401. We did a uh, business planning series this week in the office and uh, or this month. And so we started with the clinic and then, then they did the GPS and now we're on the 411. But one of the things that we're reading now in the office uh, with a group, they open it up, is that 12-week year, which coincides uh, a lot with the Miracle Morning like you do because I brought the journal with that. But really just changing, say, just changing your philosophy, how you think this 12-week year, and I've only been doing it since we started the book about two weeks ago. It's really changing because I'm like, oh, what was the goal? We said we got to have this done by this 12 weeks. How far? Making sure you touch everything every day. So I was like, mm. and then with the tools from your class, it, it definitely helps us get everything in line. So yeah, you're, you're right, Lisa. So what we're going to do is um, we already had our team annual planning event to plan for next year. And we are we're, we also talked about the 12 week year. So if you guys are watching um, what she's talking about, I don't know the author of that book. Do you have it near you? Uh -huh. we're, uh, literally, I finished my homework last night. So we bought the book, <laughs> Brian Morgan, there you and go. we bought the uh, field guide to go with it. There so. you go. Perfect. I use that with that win by noon planner. So my goal is to have those three by 2021, you know, the yeah. miracle morning. This is my 12 week plan with my journal and hopefully it's all going to go smooth. Plus with your class, cause yeah. shameless plug, not that she asked me, but if you hadn't take the implement your business, it is a must. I yeah. think that's my, my coaching for the year. So <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Well, yes. Yeah, so what I was going to say is as a team, we are instead of, of course, we're going to have our big annual reduction goal, like our number, because we kind of calculated based on year after year growth, what we want our team goal to be. And it's in alignment with the number of people that we have on our team. So it's, it's really just the natural progression. But then we're going to chunk it down to say, okay, what's the first quarter goal? And we're going to create a GPS the goals, the plan, the priorities and the strategies around just the first quarter. So we already talked as a team and that means 44 families that we will help in the first quarter. So now when you just have a three month period to knock it out and focus on it, you like Lisa's saying, you get really, really focused on what needs to happen with some urgency attached to it. So that's just a, an idea, not necessarily attached to a morning routine, but it still is a part of your plan because whenever you plan all these things out, you don't stress out about them in the morning mm -hmm. because you can be more focused on your affirmations. Just grateful to be alive today. I am so glad I woke up. I'm so glad I get to help so many families. I'm so grateful for this or that. We know that starting with gratitude is going to really put us on the right path of having an amazing day. Um, so that's what I, would, I was going to say is an affirmation that I used a long time ago before I really knew about affirmations was I just in, in the shower in the morning getting ready, I just say today is going to be a great day and smile. I didn't know necessarily if it was or not. I just knew that I was going to choose that it would be a great day. And whenever you come at the world with a positive, optimistic outlook, goodness starts showing up. And then when goodness keeps showing up, you ha keep having that positive outlook on it. Now, I am cautiously optimistic. I'm always going to still be preparing and planning and, 
and being um, aware of the realities of our world, don't get me wrong. But I even, you know, will apply so many of the six personal perspectives into my morning routine, which is, uh, and lots of you guys probably do this too, it's whether you're listening to an audio book or a podcast, putting goodness in and eliminating the negativity. Nobody needs to put what's happening in the world around us into our brains first thing in the morning. Um, that's just a simple way to put yourself on the right foot. If we're going to be feeding our brains and our, and our cells all this negativity, how are we going to show up the best for our clients and our family, really? Um, let's see, what else do I have on here? Um, I think though, uh, one thing I did put on here was a 66 day challenge. You guys know through the one thing, there's a great little tracker. So if you need to add in a new habit that you're not quite nailing yet, have some accountability around it, share it with the world. I mean, that's one way I put myself out there is I take risks uh, by telling all you guys that I'm going to do it. Cause then if I don't do it, then I'm going to know that I didn't do it and I failed and I'm going to be okay with, uh, going for it rather than getting ready to get ready to get ready, which I did for so many years. Like if I look, go back in my history, I mean, 20 years in this business and, re and really 10 since I first took bold and got a coach. So really let's pretend my, my career is 10 years old. I know that the reason that's taken me so long to get to where I am was because I moved too slow. I moved slow. And now I acknowledge it. Now I'm okay with it because I'd rather be the tortoise than the hare because I do want to build this lifelong business that will last me as long as I am able to still give back and help people. And at the same time, I also know that I had years where I had to, my affirmations were go faster, do it now. You can do this. You know, I had to like pep talk myself because naturally my behavioral style was to, to live in a little bit of fear and, and not know or trust. And I just found that I got to trust, I got to let go, you know, and I think a big part of that has everything to do with having a coach or a human in your world that knows what your big goals are, knows you intimately in your core of what you stand for and who you choose to be, and they help you get there. Because my favorite thing to quote is that we judge other people every single day. We judge other people on what they say they're gonna do. We judge them on their actions. And then we judge ourselves on our intentions. So, so many times we have great intentions, but if I don't tell anybody about it and I let myself off the hook, no harm, no foul. I can just go on being average. I can just go on being complacent and settling if I don't tell you guys about it. But if I want to grow, I'm going to tell you about it. I, I mean, I chose to run a marathon and I'm not a runner. I mean, anything is possible <laughs> in this world, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, you know, something that I, I'll do because we're getting low on our time here and I've, I've just been chatting away the whole time and I want to share something that, um, I guess I'm not afraid anymore, really, of, of going for things. I'm still a chicken with some things, of course, like skydiving or um, whatever, you know, things like that. Could, anyway, but um, my coach, uh, I'm on a group text with my coach and a couple other friends, and he just sent a message and he said, who's in on a 60-day hard? And if you guys have seen a 75-day hard, what that means, you can just Google it and it tells you what it is. So basically, you have a certain diet that you agree to and you can't have a cheat day and then you journal uh you know five sentences every day you exercise two times a day one of those being outside um, you journal you uh, meditate so all these things and oh and then the diet that they chose is no sugar and no flour and so i'm like okay i'll do it Oh, I guess no alcohol too. I kind of renegotiate a little bit on that part, but anyway. <laughs> but the point is though that, you know, all of those things that I just listed were mostly already in my day, right? I'm just plussing a few of them. 
with the journaling piece was something that I wasn't great at, even though I've taken bold 18 times and you know how you're supposed to journal all the time. Yeah. I probably cheated on that. I just don't love the journaling in the past. Right. But now I wake up every morning because I'm in this agreement with these friends. I am journaling every day and it could just be a what's going on that day or thoughts from the previous day or goals or whatever. And it's just putting, and I love what Tim Ferriss said when he, that's funny, I'm resting my computer on Tools of Titans, the Tim, Fer the Tim Ferriss book that's like this thick, um, right there. But if you guys heard him when he was with Gary Keller at Mega Camp, he said, and I'm totally gonna botch this quote, but basically he was saying that, you know, I don't trust my memory or my mind, I trust my words and my journaling is a way that I can look back and reflect and truly remember. And I think that's so smart because I'm 47 years old now and I forget things. And I thought I would remember this story about these great clients that we had this great experience or, you know, the struggles of growth and growing a team. I thought, oh, I'll remember these stories. We don't remember everything. We definitely don't remember all the details or the minute facts that really help us grow. And I just think that's so important. So I'm also doing a thing where we're running as a team and we created community around running um, as a group. So either it's walking, running, moving your body, because I felt like all oh, this COVID was hanging out around my belly and my thighs. And um, I just had to attach some uh, community to it. And that means some awesome people, many real estate agents and friends from across the country are joining us. And we're getting coached by um, a guy named Chris Boat. He is a team leader in uh, Elk Grove, California. And he helped me run a marathon last year. And so what he's talking about every, every week, we have a Facebook Live, we're talking about nutrition and hydration and what it takes just, I mean, when you move your body, you're going to feel better, you're gonna look better, you're gonna stand up prouder, and you're gonna be stronger. And so this is a part of your morning routine, whether it's stretching and meditating, or running, or whatever your exercise thing is, you gotta do it, you gotta do it. And sometimes it's, mine is just a very simple, you know, yoga with Adrian. if you search her on YouTube, it's awesome and it just helps me stretch and get grounded and gra and have gratitude in my heart for the day. So um, I know none of this is like, again, uh, life shattering, but I just think that the more we talk about it and the more we have friends that we realize we're in the same boat every single day, we have to wake up, we have to get up, we got to put our best foot forward to be the leaders that we are, whether it's our family, with our friends. I mean, I put, I do these Facebook lives every morning on my personal page and in the, in my group, because that holds me accountable to having gratitude. Like I, my favorite bold law, well, I say that every time I say a bold law. So one of my favorite bold laws is motion equals emotion. And that is when I don't feel like doing anything, but I get up and I go for a walk or I plug in here to Zoom and see you guys and your faces. I can feel your energy and this gives me energy. And now I'm gonna walk away from here. I'm gonna go hang out with my family the rest of the day and I'm gonna feel accomplished and proud of myself because I have energy from doing what I love. And that's the most amazing thing, so. Um, Oh, you're in the Crossrope community. Lisa, what is the Crossrope community? Almost like CrossFit. So you have a different challenge. We got the speed of the ropes and the weight of it. Reteaching you how to jump rope. But they do it with a cross of yoga in it, too. Right. So it, it them 20 minutes, you'd be like, it's like it starts you off with five or 10 minutes. And you're like, oh, it's not going to make a difference. But it does. It does. Well, I love that. Well, um, did I touch on or at least give you a little bit of ideas or hacks to kind of get your morning routine? You know, the honest truth is it starts the night before. It really does. And it's maybe that's just writing out all the people that you need to make sure you call the next day or all the people in your brain that you don't want to forget about. That is how you're going to have a great night's sleep. Also a bed, a good bed is important too. I like my bed a lot. 
I'm a Tempur-Pedic, so. Well, I'm gonna wrap up with you guys. Um, thank you, Lisa, for giving me a shout out because I do have some upcoming trainings I want people to know about. If anybody is under 30 watching, I'm sure we've got real estate agent friends that either, or your children are under 30. Um, I'm doing a QL with Brittany on my team. She's an instructor with me on, uh, what's this, October 23rd, it's a Friday, from noon to three virtual through Zoom. And I'd love for anyone under 30 years old can join us. It's a maximize your potential. So we're gonna work through, you know, mission statement and purpose for young people. On the 29th, I get to do a mega agent day with the Southeast region. If any of you are in the Southeast region, you'll probably recognize a lot of the people. Um, and then on, uh, Let's see, October 30th, Bob Lacido is going to join me on the next Ask Me Anything. He sells a few houses a year. And so we're going to talk about uh, mindset and grit when it comes to having a mega, mega business like he does. And then lastly, Lisa, here it is. I'm going to have a final Mirror My Business workshop, which is the precursor to implement my business. I was going to do a business planning clinic and um, pretty much... Everything I would teach in a business planning clinic is what I give you in the Mirror My Business workshop. So it'll be a three hours. Here's everything we do in our business and here's how we plan our year. So, all right. Any final parting awesome. words or ideas from you guys? You're, you're also speaking with our young professionals. We have you on the oh, yeah. as well. So oh, give yeah. a shout out. Look, I, they let me in, but I'm young at heart. So yeah, you're speaking with our young professionals. They kicked me out. So it's all right. <laughs> the problem is I pay for it for my agents on my team. So I was getting the emails and I was like, you guys are not nice. You're just rubbing it in. So <laughs> well, we're looking forward to you speaking yeah. in. I, I, I've already sent the email out, but yeah. yeah. Can't wait. Well, you guys have a super Friday. And of course, hit me up if you need anything at all. Have a great weekend. Have a good Thank one. you, Jenny. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.